Today we're talking about the Rabbit R1 Pocket Companion. This is a new AI device, separate from a smartphone, and it's got a ton of groundbreaking features. So aside from having a separate device, what makes Rabbit attractive compared to the AI models that we already have? I'm thinking ChatGPT, Bard, Copilot. And the answer to that is that Rabbit's using a large action model. So the example that they use in the keynote is uh, Steve Jobs unveiling iPhone back in 2007. And since then, the app-based model has kind of been the normal, and it hasn't changed. So ChatGPT and the others use a large language model. And this is very good at understanding human language and outputting the same. The large action model takes this a step further. Not only can it understand your input, whether that's through picture, audio, or text, it can also understand tons of different app interfaces and operating systems. BAM, as we call it. It is new foundational model that understands and executes human intentions on computers, driven by our research in neural symbolic systems. With a large action model, we fundamentally find a solution to the challenges that apps, APIs, or agents face. We solve it with interfaces. LAM can learn any interfaces from any software, regardless of which platform they're running on. In short, the large language model understands what you say, but the large action model gets things done. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. I have six people with three luggages. Find me an Uber that can fit all of us. For six people and three pieces of luggage, I recommend booking an Uber XL, as it provides ample space for all passengers and luggage. Please confirm the ride. The ride shows up, I just hit confirm. Now, this is really useful. It's easier than pulling out your phone and doing it. But I think where the true beauty comes in is when you start to chain multiple actions together. I want to take my family to London. It's going to be two of us and a child age 12. We're thinking of January 30th to February 5th. Can you plan the entire trip for me? We like cheap nonstop flights, grouped seats, a cool SUV, and a nice hotel that has Wi-Fi. Exploring ticketing options to make your trip a reality. For your trip, I found various flight options, a range of hotels to choose from, and car rentals available. Please confirm each option individually for further details and booking. One of the most intriguing things to me in the keynote was the learn functionality that Rabbit has. So the device is automatically going to have integrations with certain applications. For example, a couple that they went over in the keynote, Uber, Spotify, you know, other travel and ticket applications it's going to have the integrations with these automatically. But this learn functionality seemingly allows you to show Rabbit an action on a certain application that it can replicate in the future. So without any code, you could record a task on an application one time. And in the future, you could just talk to your device and have that task redone or done in a different way Effortlessly. So you go to teach mode, start a new session. Today, I will show you how to generate an image of puppy using mid-journey from a prompt using Discord. First, I will go to the servers page and click one of my own servers. Since this is only a general image generation, I'll go to mid-journey text channel. Then, I will use the image command along with the prompt. Here I'm putting a cute baby wild dog with big eyes, animated cartoon on rail 8K. Let's wait for a minute for the engine to start generating the images. Once it's done, let's click on the image to get the link.
I will then explain to Rabbit OS how to use this Rabbit and annotate it so that I can generate anything, not just puppies. So let's go back to our web portal, submit the request. It takes seconds for the web portal to finish processing. And that's it. It's that simple. Now, once we finish the training, I can go back to my R1. Now let's use Midjourney, as I told you, to generate a picture of a bunny in pixel art style. Certainly, Jesse. I will use Midjourney to generate a picture of a bunny in pixel art style for you. Please give me a moment to create the image. Now, here you go. You got an image generated on Midjourney through Teach Mode. That is insane. This thing also has a camera and can make decisions based on your environment. This is what I got in the fridge. Can you make me a nice dish that's low in calories? Let me see. How about a green garden omelet? It's a delicious and low calorie dish that combines the freshness of broccoli and cabbage with the creaminess of eggs. Here's a simple recipe for you. Nice. It recognized all the stuff and gave me the actual recipes. There are definitely some question marks with this technology. And the first is, will smartphone manufacturers have something very similar in the near future? And the answer to this is probably yes. Apple and Google are both working very hard on their respective AI technologies. And I would not be surprised if they have something that works similar to this in the near future. The question is how fast and also is this device a way to kind of get away from the distraction of using a smartphone? Some more of a productivity device where you can ask it to do an action without you know going on your phone and getting distracted by twitter second how many applications will be in this rabbit portal as they call it and allow you to effortlessly connect so again they have this list with generic titles such as music ride share food travel shopping but they do not specify any applications so my question is how many will there be and if they're not if there are not a ton um, how easy will it be to use that learn function? And can you use that learn function on any application? The last question is security. And this is definitely a point of emphasis from Rabbit, so I'm not too concerned. They said that with all of the integrated applications in their portal, none of the information is stored by them or shared. It's only stored with the application that you're integrating with. The device itself does not pick up any audio unless you press the button. And they also have a feature where if you put it face down, none of the sensors, audio sensors, anything on the de device pick up anything at all. The Rabbit R1 only costs $199. And to me, that's totally worth it. So I did place an order and I'm gonna give it a shot. For US customers, they're planning to start shipping in March or April of this year. So I will show you what it looks like when I get it, and we'll go over some of the results then. Even if this doesn't work out, I am very excited for the potential of these large action models and what they could bring uh, for not only a handheld technology like this, but also with smartphone integration. As always, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.